slayed, ya slayed. A minute slay, slay the house boots down Houston on the seas. Slang is not something you will learn in English class with your teacher, and that's understandable. But you really need to learn some of these words because any native English speaker uses them in normal everyday speech. And today we're going to talk about the slang you need to know nowadays. Why? Because I hear it in everyday speech from my friends, colleagues, people I know who are native speakers, and it makes my life so much easier because I know what they're talking about. It's very good that you already know expressions like slay, wipe check, bussing, that have been with us for a while. If you don't, don't worry, I'll write below the video what they mean. But today we will talk about the new slang that has flooded our social media and makes us sometimes wonder what it means. The first one is Reese joke. So firstly, what is Reese? This term is still popular from 2023, and it is a shortened form of the word charisma. A person with Reese is confident, charming, and attractive in social interactions, especially in a romantic context, because they've got the Reese. Hey, how you doing? If we're talking about a Reese joke, it's a kind of seduction joke or pickup line, a way of flirting with someone. You use it to break the ice, show interest in a romantic and playful way, and create a lighthearted atmosphere. They can be cheesy, clever, or even a little risque, but they are always intended to be humorous. That's why it's a joke. And there are tons of videos on social media with jokes like that. I'd like to report a small theft. Okay. Yes, this woman here stole my heart. Oh, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. The next phrase that I think fits any situation is I am in my something era. For example, you might say, I am in my lazy era, I am in my English learning era. The term era is often used to show person's current interests or priorities. It's some period of life. It might be a bit strange to call it an era, but it emphasizes that it's very important to you. This expression has gained popularity on platforms like TikTok, where the phrase in your something era is used both seriously and in a humorous way. You can say, I am in my I don't care era. It means that you are at a stage in your life where you have decided not to worry about other people's opinions or expectations, but to think about yourself and your own well-being first. The next phrase is do it for the plot. If you are told to do something for the plot, it means to do it for experience. It means to do something that is outside of your comfort zone. Take a chance to make your life more interesting. It comes from the idea that you are the main character in your story and can make your life or plot more exciting by doing unexpected things and taking advantage of new opportunities. For example, you may ask your friends for advice on whether you should take a new job that is interesting but doesn't pay well, and they say, go for it, do it for the plot to encourage you to take on a job that can give you an exciting experience. If someone or something lives rent-free in your mind, you think about it a lot. It can be something random or unimportant and you think about it obsessively. It takes up so much space in your head that it should be paying you rent for living in your mind. For example, you saw a funny video and can't stop thinking about it. You might say, that video was so funny that it lives rent-free in my head. The next word is eight. It is a past tense form of verb it. When you hear that someone ate, it means that they did something flawlessly, did a great job. For example, you can say, I loved Meryl Streep in The Devil Wears Prada. She ate and left no crumbs. That's why I was thinking, like, morals for spring. Groundbreaking. 
This word is usually associated with fashion and beauty and means that someone looks gorgeous. It is also often followed by left no crumbs to highlight how perfect that person's performance was. It's like they took all the talent and didn't leave enough in the world for everyone else. For example, you can say, Zendaya ate and left no crumbs at the Met Gala 2024 because her style, glamour, presentation, everything was perfect. The next one is sus, and it is short for suspicious. It can describe actions, behaviors, or even objects that seem off, questionable, or not quite right. For example, you can say, this email looks sus, I think it might be a phishing attempt. In fact, many slang words are formed by contraction. I don't think this is news to you. For example, if we take the word family and shorten it, we get the word fam which is not new but very popular slang. This is how young people call their relatives. Or another example is mid. Something is mid if it doesn't meet expectations, and this is a contraction of the word mediocre. The last one is my favorite. It's definitely not new, but my friends and I use it all the time here in Canada. To spill the tea. Yeah, sure. Go on, have a cup of tea. Thank you, thank you. Do you do you regret? Do you regret your comments? Do you regret your comments? Thank you very much. There you go. And I'm not talking about tea. I'm talking about gossip, because to spill the tea means to share gossip or to reveal sensitive or juicy information. And there is one version of where this expression came from. It could be from the phrase to spill the truth or to tell the truth. And truth is shortened simply to the letter T and T sounds like T. Imagine you know something very juicy about your boss and say to your colleague, you won't believe what I've heard about our boss. And she's like, Spill the tea, girl. That's all for today. Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe if you found it useful and see you next time.